What? Josh Uche, a former Michigan Wolverine, the pass rusher for the New England Patriots, was acquired today by the Kansas City Chiefs for a sixth round draft pick. Josh Uche, he is not a three down defensive lineman. He is more of a pass rush specialist. You was used sparingly by the New York or the New England Patriots, but when he was used, he was very effective and obviously did not cost a lot to acquire him. Easy, are you mad that Uche went to probably the second best team in the NFL behind the Detroit Lions and all it cost them was a sixth round pick? Would you have liked to see Brad Holmes make that move? I wasn't necessarily upset that we didn't get Uche in particular, but I just, you see something move, you see something shake, and it just makes me a little bit more antsy. Some you know FOMO. Yeah, well, well, ex exactly what it is, is FOMO. Because yeah. I was never like big on Josh Uche. It was more so my guy Dosa Dion. He kind of sold me on the product. And I was like, okay, maybe get him in Zedaria Smith. That would make sense. And then I was kind of thinking about it too yesterday. Like every clip that we've ever played of Dan Campbell speaking on the matter, it's always been uh, someone complimentary to the pass rush. Yes. Never somebody, at, you know, specifically a defensive end. So I've always felt like maybe it is just going to be that Sam linebacker spot because it's not necessarily a defensive end. He's more of a complimentary piece to the pass rush if you want to hit a five-man front or whatever it may be. Josh Uche specifically, no, I am not upset about. Today is October 28th. The trade deadline is November 5th. There's still time for something to happen. There still will be something happening. As a matter of fact, Chris, did I send you the video of say, Dan Campbell? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, he yeah. was asked if there's anything down the pipeline that we may see in the next 24 hours. And uh, he got a little giddy about the subject matter. Do you feel there's anything imminent uh, on the trade front, like in the next 24 hours, not in the Preds come to you with? Yeah, could be. Could be. Could be. <laughs> What'd you think of uh, Muhammad well, yesterday? No, no, seriously, though, has he come to you with something that you... Yeah, could be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have Dan Campbell getting a little giddy. Yeah, it could be. It's like it's the same energy as Kodak on the Charlemagne on um Maybe. Yeah. yeah I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> like when Co when Kodak was interviewed by Charlemagne in the yeah. Breakfast Club, he had that obviously famous, famous quote. That's the same energy there from Dan Campbell. And again, again, we're going to get this done. They're going to get help at that position. You've heard both of them say it repeatedly that he's working on it. Brad Holmes is working on it. He's making calls. Nothing is off the table. You see Dan getting a little excited about that as well. Uche, would, it, he's, would he have been nice for a six-round pick? Yeah, I would have loved to have him for a six-round pick, but he's not the Dan Campbell guy. I know how people don't like to hear that mm -hmm. when they see the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions. Like I said, probably the number two team in the NFL behind the Detroit Lions go out there and get him. You feel the FOMO. You feel like, damn, we could have had that guy. We know what these guys like. These guys like versatility. These guys like people that can play in different spots, do different things, and are not one-trick ponies. Josh Uche is very much, I don't want to be disrespectful and call him a one-trick pony, pass but he is a pass specialist. rush specialist. And as much as that we need that, as much as it sounds like that would be great, he would not fit the scheme of the defense as well as some of the other guys. They don't value it the same as as uh, as a yeah. three down edge rusher exactly. who can set the edge, Which help in the sense. run, bump into coverage if needed. It does make sense yeah. because you didn't just lose a pass rusher; yeah. you lost the best player in football in Aiden Hutchinson. <laughs> like he literally was the best player in football up to his injury. You lost a three down defensive lineman in Marcus Davenport, so you're not going to fill that role with just a pass rush specialist. If they got him and then got somebody on top of it, like you said, maybe this is Darius Smith and Uche, that would have like been great. That. But they're still going to make a move. They're going to get somebody, and my money is going to say it's somebody that will be more impactful than Josh Uche. That's another part of it, too, is like maybe Brad didn't want to give up that six-round pick because it's a part of whatever package he's cooking up right now. Like there's maybe somebody beat him to the punch, and the cheat, you know they call him like, look, you got to pull the trigger on this now, or we have somebody else that's willing to do it. And it was the Kansas City Chiefs, but it's – I believe there's something more being cooked up than a Josh Uche. I think that's what they need if they want to truly compete for the Super Bowl. I understand what they did yesterday, but yesterday was against the Tennessee Titans. They yes. have won one game. You're not playing the Tennessee Titans and the playoffs. It's just mm -hmm. not going to happen. That's not the caliber team you see in the playoffs. You saw that uh, even actually yesterday to begin the game, Mason, Mason Rudolph, Rudolph was kind of getting off a little bit there. 100 yards in the first quarter to Kelvin Ridley. And Sam Darnold, the, the game previously, so they definitely need some pass rush guys where guys can get after it. But, they're, again, they're looking for their specific type of dude. And you could, oh, I'm just sorry. Real yeah. quick, Chris. Sorry. You can blame 
the secondary if you want on that hundred yards from Calvin Uchi, Ridley. Uchi, yeah, yeah. Uchi, yeah, yeah. Uchi, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you have <laughs> if you have all day back there, which Mason Rudolph did, a guy like Calvin Ridley who fell off a little bit, but he has some of the best route running acumen in the NFL. He's got crazy feet. He's going to get open eventually, and we saw that. They play man coverage. You can't play man coverage and not get to the quarterback. And that's why we saw Mason Rudolph. 20-yard run, run scamper, too. Yeah, kind of picking apart the Lions secondary is because he was standing back there, no worry of being sacked, and delivering the ball on time to a guy in Calvin Ridley who was at once once thought of as an elite receiver in the NFL. Chris? That's exactly why I wasn't – shocked by this by this move or that the Lions didn't get him or I should say I wasn't hurt by it because of the James Houston correlation right like I should know more than anybody as the guy that was hammering the table on James Houston being the key to this defense this year and in reality he wasn't why because he was just one in in a sense one dimensional not to use that phrase disrespectfully but I think that same situation applies here and the other thing too that told me when this deal happened that book it the Lions are making a trade it's just simply knowing how GMs work knowing how negotiation works you could take this to your fantasy league boys if you're if you're making a trade and you know a team needs something everyone in the NFL knows the Lions need an edge rusher Patriots it would be malfeasance if their GM did not call while they had a deal on the offer called the Lions and said hey look here's our deal can you up this that's just simply GM so the fact that that deal did not get done shows me that they have their hands and their intention elsewhere. They're looking elsewhere. That's just simple GM. That's what you do. I'm really hoping for Trey Hendrickson. Yep. Really hoping for Trey Hendrickson. The, the, you know, the Max Crosby the Max Crosby and the Miles Garretts, that would be obviously what I want. Obviously, you want a top three pass rusher on your team. And if you didn't want those guys, I don't know what's wrong with you, but... We could say, we've been saying it the whole time, it's probably not that realistic. Hendrickson, I put the tweet out there today, obviously he's familiar, or Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn are familiar with him. They played for, Dan, or he played for Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn in New Orleans. He played next to DJ Reader, where, you know, he had a 17 and a half sack season next to DJ Reader. Um, obviously the Bengals are tail spinning. He's looking. He was looking out at the beginning of the season anyway. He requested a trade in training camp. So this is something that uh, I, I think is is very possible, and I think it's something I that makes all the sense in the world to me. Good playoff experience as well. Mm-hmm. That's you know he's played in those big games. Plays three downs. Plays three Super downs. Experience. Yeah, exactly. I'm a hundred percent bringing in Trey Hendrickson if he's on the table, which the Bengals lost yesterday and that's yes. massive because that's the trajectory of going downhill and uh selling some of those guys that are on these contracts and i wanted to ask you guys the question here 2024 first round draft pick straight up for trey hendrickson are you doing it yes or no no because you're gonna have to pay him as well i don't think it, he's I, on for next year he's on for next year that's tough. I mean, first round steep. I, I guess I'll put you this way: if Brad made that choice, I would. Yeah. I wouldn't have any reservations. You know, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm still just happy if we were to get him for something lower. I mean, obviously, probably would be a little bit happier if we were to get him for something lower. But I understand it. Like he's, I think he's only 29 or something like that, which isn't super old. Uh, he's been consistently productive his entire career. He has a familiarity with DJ Reader, as, as Spinney said. Like, no, nah, I, I wouldn't. And I look at like some of the guys that have been traded with those similar careers. It kind of goes for something like that at, at that point in their career. First you know? round pick. Yeah, and he kind of got us by the balls in the situation too, because it's just something we need. Actually, yeah, I would, I would. You have to, right? You. Yeah, I mean his numbers are elite numbers if you think they about are. it. The last three years, I'm 100 yeah. percent giving up the first rounder. I don't think there is that big of a drop off, or as much as maybe portrayed, with like obviously it's like Crosby, Hutchinson. Um, Garrett, when you talk about the elite of elite and yeah. maybe throw in like Parsons and Bosa, but I think Trey Hendrickson's just a just a step, step below that. Just under them. Just next a year. step below. Yeah. And is, I think that's still worth a late first round pick. He is on the books next year for 18 and a half. That's actually a great deal from that the production a, you're getting. That is a good yeah. number for him. And I guess the I we talked to a Bengals person uh, like two weeks ago with Dustin and I. And I guess the whole trade situation with him is he wanted to be re-upped, but Per NFL bylaw, like he had already re-upped 
too recently enough for it to be a situation they could even do. So he like came back and apologized and everything. Like, okay, whatever. Like that's why he's playing this season. It's like, but still, they lost again yesterday. They lost again yesterday. Really, could have used Baltimore to win. That would have been big because now yeah. you think you know Baltimore loses. They're like, oh, well, we're still in the shot to win the division. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, that would be the guy I would want the most outside of, obviously, Crosby and Gary. And obviously, if you guys haven't heard over the weekend, uh, Adam Schefter reported that uh, Raiders owner Mark Davis emailed him or ESPN, and they confirmed they're not trading of Max course, Crosby. Of course, Mark Davis' old ass is yeah. emailing ESPN. Rather than a text. ESPN at Google.com. I am ESPN. not trading Max Crosby. However, I did see a report that Max or uh, Miles Garrett was part of that too. No. Miles Garrett has not been off the table yet, and I'm still going to keep my fingers crossed. You see Dan Campbell jumping up and down, being kind of giddy. I can't assume that's going to be a, all due respect, not a, that's not a Zedaria Smith type reaction. Dude. But maybe Dan Campbell just loves ball like that. He, he does he love could. ball like that, but. Yeah. Oh my God! If we got Miles Garrett, but they're hundred percent making the trade. If any other takeaway I had from today's I wanted, trade, from, I wanted, I wanted, I From Uche, Uche, yeah, 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 to the Chiefs, it's the fact that the people are saying, "Oh, we're not giving up assets. We're not sacrificing the future." When you're talking about the team that's on the cusp of three peating, making another significant trade. It's a six round pick. Too. Yeah, it's like they're making another trade mm -hmm. while they're you know pursuing a three peat, meaning like three consecutive championships in a row, like teams trade to get there it, it happens they're going to trade the lions are going to make a trade for sure um and it's either this week or next week that it's going to happen because the trade deadline is on wednesday next week right oh it's interesting so yeah we'll see